This is a quick lesson on how to lubricate a VHS cassette so that you can play it back without it sticking and stopping and ejecting. Most of the cassettes that I've gotten my hands on are not the greatest. Um, and you can kind of expect that from, well, most cassettes. That's just the nature of the game. Um, you probably should not expect them to be the greatest cassettes because you will be disappointed, I guarantee it. In any case, the problem with these cassettes is that these spindles and this case are both plastic. There also is a plastic spindle up here that it rotates around and these spring clips in here are also, they're metal, but they're pushing against plastic. And over time, the plastic degrades and it gets kind of tacky. So we need to open this video cassette. The first step is to cut the label across the seam roughly. Um, you don't have to be perfect, but if you can, that's a really good idea. You have to cut the seam here and go so this tape has five screws all of them generally have five screws uh, most of them the five screws are the same length however I just opened a Fuji tape where the bottom three were shorter than the top two so watch the screw lengths as sometimes they may be different coincidentally that Fuji tape is one of the worst that I've opened now, another YouTuber had posted a video that I originally looked at to talk about this, this whole lubricating VHS thing, and he suggested swapping the reels to a better tape. Um, that's, that's great, but that's not really practical if you don't have a better tape, and a lot of people that find themselves in this situation where they want to do this may not have a better tape. So, get the five screws out and you need to take the top off. We need to pop this seam here. Make sure that it splits at the seam. Make sure this sticker isn't holding it. Uh, don't let it bounce. And generally speaking, you'll push this button over here to pop this up and then slide the top off. Try to get it to come off evenly. Okay. We're in. Now, quick review, the structure inside of VHS tape. You have two ratchets here. Let me get you closer. You have two ratchets here that prevent the spools from going in the other direction. If you pull this back, you'll be able to spool the tape by hand. So this is actually what your VCR does to release the spindles. We need to lubricate under the spindles, we need to lubricate this roller, and then the ends of these spring clips also need to be cleaned and lubricated. What I have found works best for computer fans and for these VHS tapes, at least long enough to get the video off of them, this is Walmart two-in-one bicycle chain lubricant. I use this on, well, I use it to clean my bicycle chains. But it turns out it's a fantastic lubricant for VHS tapes. Do not use WD-40, it is not a lubricant. In fact, don't use most of the stuff that's in a spray can. You need a proper lube, and the thing with this is it's a, it's a lightweight lube. It's not like lithium grease, which is too heavy. It's a lightweight lube that's easy to spread, easy to clean up. Pull these clips back, you can pull a reel up. Notice this tape has been fixed for so long that it's got a curve there. Only work on one reel at a time if you're going to take them out like this. I try not to pull this side up because this side with this little flap is harder to get back into the track. So what we're gonna do is take this roller off here the first thing I usually do is I take the roller and I put into the roller whew, 
in the roller, I put a small amount of bike lube over this black area here so that if it drips, it drips in that black area. I drip out one drop onto the roller and then I tap it gently to get the drop to work through and get the excess to fall out on the roller or on the uh, spindle area. The reason for this is that we don't want excess on this roller because it can leak out and get on our actual videotape. And there will be too much if you put a drop of this lube on this roller. Just due to surface tension, it, it holds itself up quite nicely because it's an oil. So, tappy, tappy, tappy to get as much out as you can. Then put it on this spindle here. Put the roller where it's going to go and then try tapping once more. It kind of pops the bubble, so to speak. That's probably enough. And it's okay if there's a bit of excess. It's not really going to hurt anything as long as it doesn't get on the actual tape. And these giant spindles do a pretty good job of keeping that intact. Next, we're going to put a little drop, as small a drop as possible, into, there we go, into the actual area where this spindle rolls. This is a bounty paper towel folded over a few times. Um, I use bounty towels because they absorb a lot better. Cheap towels will leave a lot more dust and they're just, they just don't absorb worth anything. Um, the towel will absorb some of the oil but not all of it and I mean you can see it's saturated because I've used this on about eight tapes so far. The general circular area, it doesn't have to be perfect. Most of the contact is actually made at this rim here. So make sure you get a nice even coat. Let me see if I can show it to you. You see a sheen there? No, not really. Yeah, you can if I do it this way. So yeah, make sure that you have a nice uniform level of shine on that. There you go, you can see that. Okay, once you've got that, put the paper towel somewhere that the grease on it won't mess anything up. I said grease, but I meant oil. And we need to bring this back and feed it back in. The easiest way to do that is to spin out a little slack. Be careful because this will fall off the reel very, very quickly if you don't put a finger there to stop it. Get it in the crack like that and put it back in either by pulling these spring clips or at a slight diagonal to get it back in place. Then wind it. This has the effect of distributing the oil as well as tightening up. There we go. Tightening that up. Now, this one is harder. I, I don't like doing this one. What I have to do is I hold a finger here over this area here so that the tape cannot come out. And I have to pick up this reel here and hold it while still holding that area. And I can't really show you the process of applying the oil, but it's the same thing. Little drip, that was a bit more than a little drip. And I'm gonna need to clean that up. Yeah. With this one, I'll sometimes uh, lubricate the bottom of the spindle as well. You can, you can actually put a light layer of the oil on both. It's not gonna hurt anything. Yeah, let's see. That's nice, that's very nice. Okay. The main thing is just that you don't want this oil to get on the tape, the actual tape. And it won't, generally speaking, get on the tape. All right, see my middle finger has not moved. So that tape is still stuck there. So I need to get this in. Yep, okay, and pull it tight. All right, we can see the tape did not fall out of the tape path, which is fantastic. All right, so we lubed this here. We lubed underneath both of these. One last step is we need to take our little rag here and gently lube just, just these little tabs here, the ends of the tabs. Sometimes they get dirty with plastic, but they push against the plastic nipple on the spindle. So lube it up in those four places, well, five places, 
two tabs, two spindle bottoms, and one roller. By the way, these metal things here don't roll. They do not need to be lubricated. This doesn't need to be lubricated. It's only this white plastic roller on the inside, not the outside, and the underside of the two spindles and the ends of the two tabs. We will put, we'll pull this cover up just the slightest bit, put the tape back together, kind of put it down as evenly as you can. Yeah, that actually fell out. You know what? We'll do it this way. We'll get the back first. And then we'll, oh, that's what's going on. The tape got stuck. That's why the tape needs to be taut so that it doesn't get stuck in this when you put it back together. So I crinkled it a little, but it'll be okay. All right, that's down. And now we just need to reassemble the tape. Um, I'm doing what is probably a no-no in using a, mag a magnetized, not magnetic, screwdriver. I did magnetize it some time ago and it's still magnetic, but it's not super strong. Uh, anyway, if you put this back together and you throw it in your VCR, you'll find that it works perfectly fine. The tape should not bind up. It's still a good idea to do a fast forward rewind cycle so that you can, because these tapes, man, over the years, they can they can stretch, they can get sticky against themselves, all kinds of stuff happens and if you use fast forward it'll pull everything just to the point that it loosens it all back up. You, you kind of have to break it loose over if it's been sitting for 30 years, you know. Some of these tapes that I've seen, they're labeled 1989, this one's labeled 1990. Anyway, that's that. I wonder if it actually has Home Alone on it. Someone put a cover that says Home Alone on this. Anyway, that's how you lube up a VHS tape to recover the video, uh, capture it in. Maybe in a future installment, I'll actually show you the capture process. With uh, You use an old computer with an old capture card, and it works wonderfully. Take care. Do you know that stack of VHS tapes that you have sitting in your attic or garage? Pick those up and bring them to Gazing Cat Productions. At $25 per tape, 20 per tape if you have five or more, we'll digitize your VHS tapes. Get your VHS tapes converted into movie files that can be archived forever, shared on the internet, and more. Take those aging memories and turn them into a legacy. Before it's too late, VHS tapes degrade in storage, so get them digitized at Gazing Cat Productions as soon as you can.